therefore a simultaneous whole, this idea therefore, any simultaneous whole that contains within itself the highest expression of the whole is what is called eternity. For eternity is a simultaneous whole. Therefore, the basic idea in the mind of God, one idea, is that whole of all wholes, which then is experienced as eternity. Right? That's the idea of eternity, and all of the ideas within that class are eternal. But to experience that idea directly, to experience that idea directly, to experience this idea directly, is the experience of beauty. Beauty itself. Now, how is it experienced if it is an experience of beauty? Because beauty is the name of something. Beauty is the name of something. What is that thing about which you are calling beauty? It is a divine luminosity. In that divine luminosity, which is beauty itself, because there's nothing that can be, can be even imagined to be more beautiful than that, one grasps, therefore, the nature of reality, ultimate reality. One recognizes that it is no different than mind or intelligibility, I'll call mind. It is a living vitality. It's the source of all vitality. And since it is the very nature of reality, another word for that is being. Therefore, to encounter this directly, one is overcome with a vast sea, as it were, of beauty itself, where you're not different from it. That's another way of talking about the idea in the mind of God. This is the idea of all ideas. Another way of putting that is to say that any time you're working on something and you come to an insight into anything that you're doing, that moment of insight, that moment of insight and intuition can be deepened and broadened depending upon the subject matter that you're in. If it finally includes yourself on the highest level, then in that moment of insight, you recognize, do you not, you're able to stay there. So you're able to endure this. That experience of insight is what mind is experienced as in this experience. Therefore, in that experience, you know it's mind because in, pure, in this pure sense, mind is nothing other than a pure intuition into the nature of reality. To have the experience of a true insight into the nature of reality, you must therefore recognize that reality is not dead, but is the very source of vitality. And that very source of vitality then is disclosed as nothing else, is what is, what is most preeminently real. Well, this is Platonic thought. See, this is Platonic thought. Now, a war occurs over this. A great struggle occurs over this. People don't want to admit this. No, 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 it can't be. No, 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 it can't be. Let's change it. Let's change it. So what do they do? Well, the first thing to do is you have to take the idea of light, and this whole idea, because this divine beauty is a divine luminosity. That's the experience of divine luminosity. You have to, you have to see it in opposition. You have to see it as an, an opposition. Light and dark. Therefore, man has descended into this body and the body is dark <clears throat> right. and obscures our vision and we're captured in it and it's a jail-like structure. We're imprisoned and we seek to get out of our prison into the light and therefore there's a vast struggle going on here. If you personify the forces that are holding us back, personify both, 
Then you get an evil power over here, and over here you get a good one. Forces of light against forces of darkness. If you do that, you're taking this idea of the struggle and polarizing it. When you polarize it, you turn it into opposites. When you turn it into opposites, then you find yourself in that struggle within your own soul. A war within yourself. Mirroring the cosmic struggle outside. The reason we suffer so much in this world is because of apprehensive representation. We experience everything in our minds. We're separate and solitary. We're caught in this cell. Over here, no cell. No boundary because you know what? Here, the Platonists would say, I appreciate your thought that perhaps you do experience all this in the mind. Would you mind pointing out right now where the mind is? You do experience things in the mind, don't you? That's what I've been taught. And if so, should we not, like right now, what are you looking at? You. No, where? Out there. Where? Right there. No. You've been taught what? That it's in here. That's right. Hi, what's moving? <laughs> what's moving? <laughs> what's moving? Um... What's moving? Everything is moving. Oh, no, not, not, not this. How about this? Is your this hand, moving? Your hand is moving. What? Is it my hand? Where do you experience it? Where do you experience this? In my mind. Therefore, what's moving? My mind is moving. Thank you. It's in your mind right now. You're looking at me. What are you looking at now? You're looking at your mind then, aren't you? Right now, you're yeah. looking at my mind. Huh? Mm -hmm. Good. Hi. Hi. <laughs> I'm in your mind, right? I'm in her mind, right? No wonder this is a weird evening. Where? Are, what's in your mind? You are. Right? Right? While you're looking at me, can you quickly look over at the boundary and see whether you can see the edge of the mind? I mean, you are taught that you're experiencing things in your mind. Yeah. If it's in it, shouldn't you know the boundary? I should at least be able to look around in there. Yeah. It's kind of hard. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is, it is. Look here. If you accept this, you see, then you're divorced from reality. You're separated from reality. You're caught in a vast struggle between opposing forces. This is Gnostic thought. This is Gnostic thought. It's taking this idea, dropping it one more level. If you take Gnostic thought, all right, eliminate the war between good and evil, but build on this apprehensive, pardon me, apprehensive representation as the basis for your thinking, then you're a Stoic. If you carry a little backpack and go from town to town giving antidotes, you're a cynic. Have you ever seen it? In Platonism? No, no. Have you ever seen that struggle? Um, well, I've experienced both conditions. Yeah, okay. This idea that this represents reality is a Gnostic idea. Mm -hmm. If you're asking, is this in Plato? No, it's not in Plato. Hmm. When you deify this, you deify this, then this becomes Satan. This becomes the angel of light, however you want to put it. That's this is.